Today, we're going to rebuild Ajax until we win the Champions League using this amazing 4 3 3. It's quite the task, I will say, but if you guys do enjoy the rebuilds on this channel, be sure to leave a like, drop a subscription as well, and comment below the team you want to see rebuilt next. And also, if you want to download all of the tactics you see in this video, you can do so by clicking the link in the description, which will take you to the Patreon, where if you are wished to join in, you can get over 10 perks. So, definitely worth having a little look and enroll into the current giveaway as well. I do want to say you're not forced to do that. You can stick around and watch this video in different parts where we're going to go over every Every tactic we're going to use obviously we're going to tweak it a fair bit over the seasons but let's go over and just see how much of a mess this team is in because in real life it's not looking great so Ajax, a team with probably the most history in Dutch football, I would say. The, probably the team you really think of when you think of the Dutch League. No disrespect to anybody else, obviously. There's some big names in this Dutch League as we look down this table here. But high in sight being, they are a team which are going to be predicted to finish in, well, predicted third, actually. But in my opinion, we need to be winning the league. Obviously, it's not our aim of the video. Our aim is to win that Champions League. But we're going to see how hard that is going to be, of course. Finance-wise, in the first season... Maxed out, we've got a budget of £30 million, so it's enough to get a few players in, but obviously one of the main, the main issues with this team, especially on FM, when you try and rebuild them, is this. The fact is we have not got any staff in any position, apart from a doctor, so... What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to really get, you know, hiring some staff. Now, I'm not going to include that in a video because that is going to take loads of time. I don't want to go through every single role, but we're going to do our best to at least cover every single position here because otherwise we are going to be an absolute mess going into that first season. Squad-wise, we know who we've got. We've got some really good players. We can't see the ability yet because we've got no staff to show us, but we have got some fantastic players. Just looking down the list, just sort of cherry picking some players like Hato, Van Dongen, or Van Axel Dongen, should I say. Obviously, there's, there's so many good players here. Univar's a great player. Taylor, Wrench, um, Broby's a fantastic player. Windau, Bergvine, Brumen, 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 sorry, Berghaus, Akpom. We've got a lot of talented players. We all know this, and obviously, I'm sure if we were to go into the B team and the under-A D team, there's, there's going to be some good players here as well. But what we're going to do is, as a rule of thumb, we're going to dissect the team, See what players are going to stay. See what players are going to go. I'm going to try and keep it youth themed because it is Ajax. They sign a lot of young players. But if I do need to bring the experience, I'm going to do so. So let's get into the first transfer window with this £30 million and see what we can do. So we've kept it quite basic for this transfer window, and we've brought in actually some really good players, or two really good players in my opinion. The first one is going to be Kieran Drewsby Hall from Leicester City, previous Premier League player of course, until they did go down, and this guy's just got a ton of potential. I mean, he's already a very well-built player in that midfield area, and I think he's going to take this midfield to the next level. It was one of the areas which I thought could have done with a little bit of a spruce up, slash not a backup option, but just add a player to the mix, and in terms of a player's value, I don't think what we paid for him in £15 million is too bad at all. Now, I know some people might think I could have got someone better for that sort of money, but I like to keep the Rebels interesting and sign some players we all actually know. And, I, you know, we watched this guy for several years in the Premier League, and he's a really, really good player. So hopefully he can take his talents over to this league and perform at the same level. I also turned to Zenit and paid £12.2 million to bring in Claudinho, a 26-year-old, so a little bit older than Drewsby Hall. And I brought this guy in because he's a bit more of a built-up version of Drewsby Hall and his going to easily get into the first team. Now, of course, he's not the youngest of the youngest, and I did say towards the intro that I was going to try and keep it sort of a younger sign and rebuild, but I am trying to win the Champions League, so it's finding the perfect balance between youth and experience, and this guy, despite not playing in the Premier League or anything like that, he has got experience, he's got really good attributes, and like I said, for the value of 9.7 million, actually, which we paid up front for him, he is not going to be too bad of a player at all, and got some fantastic pros going for him as well. So hopefully, with these two signings, that's going to make a really big difference. You can see here as well, obviously, the likes of Univar, a fantastic player. He's only going to be out on loan, so we are going to get this player back, which is a real big, real big bonus, because he's a fantastic player. We've also obviously got some other players, which unfortunately have left, the likes of Durami and Bassi, who obviously I did didn't sell, they got sold before. Klaassen obviously went on the free. Yuri and Timber, another big loss. We've got, a, and also Alvarez, by the way. We have got a lot of players that we have got to try and make up for. A lot of players out on loan as well, who we are going to get back. So this first season, we're going to whack it into a tactic and we'll see how we do. But ideally, we at least win the league. 
That's what I'm aiming for, because I think we've got enough players to do so. Coming into that first season, we are going to deploy the Ajax V1. Now, I'm not going to break it down just yet, because we are, we might actually have some tweaks at this mid-season, etc., etc. But this is going to be your basic 4-3-3 with a few unique twists. So, we're going to try and get the likes of Berghaus and Bergvine um, inver invert, involved as much as we can. And obviously, we're going to rely on the likes of Akbom and Broby to get them goals. We're going to have the box-to-box -box and a Mazala coming in, the ball in the midfield player, the wing-backs... DCL, DCR, and also the goalkeeper coming in. Now, we've got a lot of players that can play in these positions, so I just want to show, the, show you the sort of team we have got building at this club. So, Rudy's obviously going to be the number one goalkeeper. We've got Sosa and Hato, who can both play, play left back, alongside of Wrench. Obviously, Wrench can play actually anywhere, I believe, across this back line. He really can do it all, that guy, to be fair to him. Um, at the back, we've got the likes of Menic and Sotalo, so two real good players there. In the midfield, obviously, Wrench can also cover this position. We've got Van der Boomen, we've got Menich, we've also got Kenneth Taylor, Manswerk. We've actually got a really good set of players, and these aren't actually showing absolutely everyone. So, one last thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to jump over to the under-18 team, make sure we're not missing out on anyone. If I am I'm going to promote them to the team but we're going to get into the first season and see what we can do let's pray for a title well we're not going to complain guys in the first season we've won the league title and also the Dutch Cup against FC Twente a fantastic fantastic debut season 90 goals scored in the league only 25 conceded and we nearly went invincible one game we lost which is going to be against the T's in a 1-0 defeat I believe at home as well so a bit disappointing they obviously are a team who finished in ninth place but Let's be realistic. It's a really good start. Not the best display in the Europa League, but of course, we are now going to be instantly in the Champions League, which is the area we're trying to actually try and win that trophy in. So it is a really good start to the season. Going over to the squad, we are going to be looking at the goal scorers. Brian Broby, fantastic player with 25 goals. Steven Berghaus coming in with 23. 13 for Claudinho. Let me click off that. Again, a very good debut season for him. Bergvine coming in with 12. Good to see him back at his best. Seven coming in for Borje. Taylor picking up seven as well. Drewsby Hall picking up four. Akpon with four. Assist wise, we're going to have 12. For Actually, that is really good to see. Drewsby Hall being the top assistant, which is incredible, with 12. Berghaus with 10. 10 for Sosa. 10 for Claudinho. Again, enjoying a really good season. And nine coming in for Manswerk. So a lot of players getting involved with the actual nitty gritty of the game. Going over to the actual average rating, though, overall, is actually going to be Berghaus coming in, picking up the highest rating overall. So quite a good season for him. Obviously, a player who has been at Ajax for a decent amount of time and a player who I'm going to try and keep hold of unless we get an offer, which is absolutely ridiculous. We're going to try and keep him. He's not the quickest player, but he makes up for this in other areas and enjoyed a really, really good season. So absolutely buzzing for that. And of course, the main thing we're going to focus on is going to be this budget. We've got 30 million, 31 million, really, 31 million pounds to go and spend. So it is going to be a quite a fair transfer budget again going into that second transfer window. And we're going to try and build on, obviously, within the Dutch League and the Dutch Cup squad-wise. Going over the contracts, obviously we have got a few players where we've got to renew now. So anyone that's in 2025, we're going to look at. So I'm really trying to get this guy to perform well. Um, Sky Vink, obviously a player who usually develops really well in FM. I'm trying to give him a shot. I'll give him between two or three seasons. If not, goodbye to him. I will offer him a new contract, though. We're going to offer Hayes a new contract. Obviously, this guy, Wrench, needs to stay at the club. Berghaus, contract. Probably going to leave the likes of Sten Kramers and... This guy is 40. I know he's a bit of a legend in terms of him being so old and a really good quality keeper, but he's not going to be the future of Ajax. So we're going to go deal with some contracts, go into the second transfer window, but what a first season. I would like to say I've been putting a lot of time into improving the staff and situation. And as you can see, we're doing quite a good job now. I mean, we've pretty much got everything covered. We need to get some doctors in here, but we've got the physio sorted, the doctor, the head of sports science. We've got physios. We need another actual doctor. Um, director of football has been secured, technical director, chief scout. We've got six out of 10 scouts, so maybe a few more of those. We've got recruitment analysts in. We've got a good loan manager, and everything here is almost under control as well. So it's quite a tough challenge when you first take over Ajax. And to be honest with you, I didn't have it all in place in season one. I had a few staff members in, but it was very hard to try and actually lure people to this club. But obviously after winning the Dutch league and a trophy, a few more people were willing to come to us. Going over to the transfers, though, you can see another person actually coming in right now. Going to the transfer history, this is going to be the second season, so we are going to bring in two real big names again. That is going to be Thiago Almada from Atalanta for £9 million. Um, again, a fantastic player. Did I say Atalanta there? 
Atlanta United. A fantastic player there who can play not only through the middle, but also out on the left-hand side. And if needed, also on the right. We're going to focus playing him probably on the left-hand side, to be honest, where he has got some really impressive attributes. He's reasonably quick. He's got great free kicks, good dribbling, good flair, good passing, good technique, pretty much everything you'd want for a wide player. And he's only 23 years of age, which is really, really impressive. He's already going to be a leading Dutch league player. So again, that's going to go in his favor significantly. And again, the price tag, I think, is more than fair enough. £9 million, they actually turned a little bit of a loss on him. But I do think he's going to cook in this league and it's a very good addition to this team. And of course, that's not the only signing of the day as we go forward again. We also did bring in Mika Marmol from Las Palmas for £18.5 million. You might think that's a lot of money, but he's an incredible Spanish centre-back, only 23 years of age, already going to be a leading Dutch league player. Tons of pros going for him. He's absolutely rapid. He's got great anticipation, great levels of tackling. And if he does actually need to do it as well, he can cover left back. So looking for, towards the future, a 23-year-old player, in my opinion, is still quite a young player to bring in. A player that can be at this team for easy 10-plus years. And I do think he's got to cement a team in this team and make all the difference, being a little bit more of a structured centre-back to secure that back four. Yes, we did spend a pretty penny on him. Obviously, they got him on the free last Palmas. Um, well, no, they didn't. Yes, they did, I think, actually. But £18.5 million, pounds, it might sound a lot of money. We spent what we had, basically. So I don't think it's that outrageous, to be honest with you. And we got a really good player out of it. Players that are going to be going out, though, you're going to see the likes of a few players here. Nothing too significant, in my opinion. I'm trying to hold on to my players at the moment because I'm still trying to get a rough indicator of the players that need to go. And it's hard to do that after one season. But in my opinion... The second transfer window went really, really well. I'm going to go into the next season with this tactic looking here. And as you can see, it's a very generic sort of looking 4 3 3. But honestly, it really does cook with this Ajax team. Not only are we going to have very attacking wingers, we've got quite an attacking midfield as well. With the likes of Claudinho, Drewsby Hall, who obviously is actually going to get stuck in. He's going to be moving into them channels and really providing a lot of stuff into this team. The wingbacks are quite restricted, although they are going to be getting further forwards naturally. They don't actually have too much of an attacking influence. But just looking at this screen here, here because you can see the sort of players we have and they are absolutely incredible we're really building up a young team here which have got a lot of potential and a lot of players fighting for a lot of positions if we actually go onto this squad planner here we can actually get a good indicator of this we've got four goalkeepers right back wise we have got three players who can play it to quite a good ability center back wise we are absolutely blessed same goes for the left back as well something i'm definitely going to do at the end of this season is see how everybody plays and obviously offload the weakest candidates midfield absolutely blessed that applies for every single position in the midfield we've got the likes of Drewsbury Hall, Claudinho, Manswerk, Taylor, Booman, um, Kian Fitz, Jim who probably will end up going to be honest with you um, we've also got Almada who can play there the right hand side or wingers in general we're really blessed as well strikers the only one where maybe we can look to bring another player in because Sky Vink it's a really big season for him and I want to see another consistent season from Broby if not I will bring in another striker but let's see what we can do in the second season hopefully maintain the Dutch league title let's see so it's not going to be as impressive I'm going to be honest with you we didn't actually win the league title Feyenoord had an absolute blinder and we lost the league by one point did we lose to Feyenoord directly that makes it even worse. Even worse, that makes it absolutely gutten. The Club World Championship, we lost in the second round against Roma as well. Runners up in a Dutch Cup against PSV. We did win the Cruyff Shield, so it's something against Feyenoord. We're going to take it. We're still the league best the league best goal scorers, coming up with 94. Defensive-wise, we maybe could do with a little bit more of an improvement again. But finishing in the top three is quite expected, to be honest with you. But obviously, we are finishing second. So we're going to take it. It's not the end of the world. It was actually quite a close competition between PSV, us, and Feyenoord. So quite a good competitive league to watch for this season, that is to be said. Going over to the squad, though, we've got to see what's going on. What is going on here? Let me add in the senior squad. There we go. Um, we are going to get a good insight. So... We are seeing Berghaus coming in with 24 goals, 20 for Broby. Steven Bergwijn with 18. He's having a really good season. Um, not only the first season, but also this season as well. Almada had an okay start with 13 goals and 14 assists. 11 for Manswerk. Kenneth Taylor with 11 and 16. Drewsby Hall's performing to a really good level. 11 goals and also 15 assists. And just in general, a lot of the new players actually are doing quite well. I mean, Drewsbury Hall, Almada as well with 14. Claudinho having quite a good season, considering he does sometimes play a little bit of a deeper role. Going off the ratings in general, it would actually be Jay Gorter, who, um, how many games did he actually play for the club, though? 
Oh, we're not going to count that. That is that is a stat padding game. That is so. Actually, it's going to be the likes of um the likes of Berghaus really is going to be a favourite. Then Almada actually finishing in second place, which is cool to see. Bergvine, Drewsbury Hall. So we've got a lot of players actually who are new faces that are really carrying this team finance wise we'll see what we've got we are going to have a total of 26 million pounds now we might have some players to sell and i'm sure we are going to have some players to sell whether they're players that have got contracts expiring or players that maybe i just want to move on because i don't really see them having a future at the club but reality is we need to be doing a lot better, right? So we need to be winning the league, to be honest with you. We need to at least be, in my opinion, winning the, we could be winning the treble here. This league, the Dutch Cup and the Croy Shield. The Champions League obviously is going to be what it is. I don't even know if it said what we've done in the Champions League. Um, didn't even display it. So that's that's not ideal. Um, can we actually have a little look? Um, where do we go to see this? Let me try and find it. You know what? I'm actually not too gutted about this. Obviously, we won the Super Cup as discussed, but Champions League-wise, we were actually okay for the first season. A 3-2 win over Milan, obviously quite a good team to beat. Again, a 1-0 win. We beat Young Boys in quite a dramatic game. We probably should have beat them more. We beat Barcelona, lost against Chelsea and Liverpool, beat Milan again, lost against Arsenal, lost against Sociedad, paced the Club Bruges, got battered by Man City, but then to be fair to us, we put up a quite a good fight in the second leg. Obviously not enough to get us through, but a 3-1 win there and a 5-0 win against Porto. So, I mean, we had quite a good Champions League, to be honest with you. So, as terms in, in terms of a first season in the Champions League, I'm quite happy with that. Obviously, we've got a lot to improve on as we are going to do so. Contract-wise, again, this is going to probably be painful to see. We've got quite a fair few players, so this is what I like to do. I like to see the players that are going to be expiring in 2026. Um, Jorge Sanchez is probably going to be sold. Univar is not going to be getting sold. Jay Gorta, maybe. Berghaus not going to be getting sold. And Ruli definitely not going to be getting sold. So we're going to have some contracts to try and dish out to these players. Let's go and do that firstly, and then see what we can do with our big, big 26 million. Not really a lot, is it? So when I say we have spent big... We have spent big. We've brought in a lot of players. I'm not happy with last season. And we have gone big. We've spent £16 million on Kareem Kanate. We all know who this guy is from, obviously, Salzburg. A fantastic talent, not only in real life, but also, obviously, in football manager. A pre-built striker, very quick on the ball, great agility, great determination, great finishing. Obviously going to be a leading Dutch league player already. And again, only 21 years of age. His history, we are going to see here. Last season, maybe not the best of the best. He only played 13 games, to be fair. £16 million, in my opinion, is an absolute steal for a player like this. Up next is going to be Rojas from Atletico Madrid's B team for £18.7 million. A player who actually got scouted and again looks absolutely ridiculous in terms of growth. Yes, it might be quite a fair price tag to pay for a player who is 17 and not really broken into football that much but I back this guy to be something special I'm actually going to try him in the DM spot because he looks quite good in there to be honest in my opinion and again if we need him to do so he can play through the middle and also out on the left hand side so one for the future in the likes of Pablo Rojas the next signing is going to be Jao Varzes Varzias from Akameda for 2.8 million pounds again a very young signing when you get a player of 16 years of age who has already got 16 tackling, 17 determination, 17 teamwork, and is already a Dutch League standard player, you have to take the gamble. And for £2.8 million, you'd be nuts not to. So really, sign up for the future right about now. The next page we're going to see, as by the way, we are going to see the likes of Jorge Sanchez go to the Saudi League for £4.7 million, which is why we could also fund, alongside a selling Vink to Arsenal for £7.7 .7 million, we could fund Costa from Braga, £13.7 million. Again, really looking for the future. A very sort of young, fairly determined centre-back. And again... I know I'm trying to get a mixture of experience and younger players, and we might go into this third season, and maybe I've gone too much with younger players, and we're not going to win the league title again. If I have, that tells me a lot about what I've done. I don't need to back these younger players up with experienced players to balance out the squad a little bit. But for the price tag of £13 million, I think this is a fantastic player for the future. And lastly, it's going to be Mamar Dashvili. Mamar Dashvili, I'm going to probably butcher that, but £23 million for one of the best young goalkeepers in the game, 24 years of age, already a league in, league leading Dutch league player, sorry. Um, 
And again, yes, it's not ideal for Ruli because he's probably going to be put to the bench for a little while. But this player is going to hopefully secure up that back line because although we're going out and we're outscoring everyone, we're still conceding the odd goal here and there. And I do think that's something we need to improve on. Now, if we go to his history, obviously played for Valencia, which is a fairly decent league, a decent league, a decent team in that Spanish division. Maybe £23 million is a little bit too much, but you have to pay a lot for experienced players who have still got a lot of potential. That's just football at the end of the day. And going over to the tactics page we are going to see now i'm actually going to lock in the new keeper and we're locking Vazias and also Rojas. And we are going to deploy this v2 tactic and i forgot to show you obviously towards the end of last season so i'll show you this tactic right now it is going to be a sweeper keeper simply on the default instructions a wing back on the right simply on the default a ball playing defender on cover on shoot less often another ball playing defender on shoot less often and tackle harder a wing back on the left on support on sit narrower and also tackle harder. A ball in the midfield player comes in on support on mark tighter. A box to box comes in on support on move into channels and also tackle harder. A Mazala comes in on close down more and also tackle harder. On the right hand side is a winger on attack on cut inside and also tackle harder. And exactly the same, not exactly the same, sorry, completely wrong words, got used to saying that. On the left hand side is a winger on shoot more often. And to finish it off, the advanced forward on attack also on shoot more often so i'll go over that winger again a winger on the left on shoot more often and on the right cut inside and also tackle harder team instruction wise on the positive mentality fairly wide is going to be selected we're going to pass the ball into the space we're going to play out from the back with a shorter passing directness a slightly higher tempo work ball into the box be more expressive and also mixed crosses in transition it's going to be counter press counter Distribute quickly, distribute to anybody across the back line with no distribution type selectors. And lastly, out of possession, the standard line, the high press line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And that's going to see, we're going to see what we can do with this V2 of the tactic. If you are enjoying so far, by the way, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, if you are a Patreon, you can download this rebuild save file and also all of the tactics you see in this video in one simple download. But let's go into the third season hopefully reclaim the Dutch League title. Otherwise, I'm going to turn to experienced players. Let's see what we can do. So guys, the third season is, um, it's not ideal. It's not ideal, the third season. We didn't win the league. Feyenoord actually went invincible. I'm going to check, have they still got Onslaught? They've still got Onslaught in charge, of course they have. We did win the Dutch Cup against PSV, though. We got to the round of 16 in the Champions League against Arsenal, which, um, how bad of a humiliation was that, actually? Round of 16... Not too bad, actually, to be honest with you. At least we didn't get battered. So we are making a little bit of progress in the Champions League in terms of being consistent in that competition now. But we're going to try and win it. We need to win it. Um, In terms of the actual league, though, again, the best goal scorers who were always good at scoring the goals. It looks like Karim Kanate had a very good season as well, which we are going to validate right now by going over to the squad. And we're seeing it here. So it is going to be Kanate coming in with 21 goals there. 20 for Almada, Drewsby Hall with 11, 10 for Bergvijn, 7 for Broby, 7 for Claudinho, Berghaus with 6, 6 for Sotalo as well. Assist wise, 12 for Bergvijn, 11 for Kenneth Taylor, Drewsby Hall with 11 as well, 9 for Claudinho, Berghaus with 8, 6 for Hato, and also 6 for Almada. Now, I will say, it's, it doesn't seem like a lot when you read out these stat lines. Like, you know, I guess two players are on 20, to be fair. But in my opinion, I've seen a lot more, a more, lot more of an out, sort of goal scoring outlet in other tactics I've used and other teams I've used as well. But the fact is we are dominating this goal scored quite convincingly. So we're not got to worry about the players in terms of the goals, but we've got to shape up the back line a little bit because we, we lost five games. And I mean, yes, they are going to include Sparta, Rotterdam, um, AZ, Feyenoord and PSV. And a lot of them were, they were all by one goal margin. So if we just secure the back line up a little bit, maybe we'll be okay. Who did we draw again? against Feyenoord and obviously is that her event her event I believe so you say that um so it's not ideal I will be honest it's not ideal but definitely something we can work on and hopefully bring in some center backs um who maybe not bring in some center backs bring in an experienced center back to go alongside of the youth we signed um for this season though in the fourth season we've got, oh, we've got a bit more we've got 45 million pounds they're slowly back at us Step by step, they're going to slowly back us, I feel. Going over to the squad, though, contract-wise, we're going to have Claudinho, Berghaus, Booman, Bergvine, Vindel, Broby, Taylor, Gonsi, Sal, 
Kramer's Dong. Oh, wow. We have got so many players where their contracts are going to be expiring. I'm going to be real. It might even be time to move on the like of Berghaus if we can. He's dropped down to his two-star ability. He's fallen off a little bit in his sort of play. He is getting old, don't get me wrong. Um, he is 34 years of age. He's done a very good job as it is, but there's going to be a lot of stress on this transfer window, I think, to try and actually secure a very, very good, you know, fourth season because the Champions League's the main aim, but at the minute, we're not even winning the, we're not even winning the Dutch League. We need to improve. So I'm going to show you like this because every single player that you're about to see is going to be a free transfer. That is right. I have gone mental and back free transfers because the players we got are absolutely mental. I'll show you at the end as well the full breakdown. But the first player is going to be Leon Bailey. And again, he was a freebie and he might not be our best winger. He might not be, but he is going to provide a lot of backup option. I mean, he can play on the left and the right hand side to a very good ability, not only in sort of the midfield area, but also obviously in the attacking area as well. He is absolutely rapid. He has got great flair and also quite a good finish to be fair. And again, completely free. And this is a player who has been valued, obviously, at £30 million from Leverkusen to Villa. So to get him on the free is a massive W. Up next is going to be, yeah, Ruben Neves. Obviously, coming from the Saudi League, probably didn't like the low competition. He's now going to come back to the Dutch League, a star Dutch League player, and he's going to be that indeed at 29 years of age. Yes, he's going to cost us a fair whack, £145,000 a week, but he was obviously on God knows how much in the Saudi League. He is one of the most well-rounded players in the game at this current date, and he is going to be an absolute diamond in that midfield. He can obviously play deeper and also further up the field if needed and again he has played for some decent teams Porto Wolves and was valued at 47 million pounds so to get him on the free what can I say? Next, and you've got to know why, because you've got to see the players going out shortly. Lorenzo Luca is going to step in and be a backup striker. Again, a fantastic option. Might not be the quickest striker in the book. That is going to be the truth. But again, quite young, 25 years of age, a good Dutch league player, decent attributes. And again, he has played for a mixed bag of clubs. Obviously, previously has been on loan at this club as well. Last season, 18 goals. So to get him on the free... I'm not going to complain. I can't even believe I'm going to say this name. Samir, obviously previously from Leicester, Sevilla, Lille, PSG. He's played at some real, real big clubs. And to get this guy who was valued at 64 million to 79 million pounds on the free, only on 73k a week as well. He is just an absolute unit. He reminds me so much of Kante. Very well rounded. He's got great teamwork and he's just really well balanced. A fantastic player. Yes, he's slightly on the older side at 27, but... He's going to bring a lot of experience. He's going to be a leading Dutch league player. And we're going to see this guy right now. He has played at some really good clubs. Obviously, PSG, um, the likes of Lille, Leicester, Sevilla. Obviously, Leicester again. And to get him on the free was not expected. And yes, it wouldn't be a name I would go out and necessarily sign off the top of my head. But to get him on the free, there is not a single day I'm not going to say yes to that offer. And yeah. It's got even, it's got even, it's got even more nuts. It's going to be Mark Gahai from Crystal Palace. Obviously, one of the best Wonder Kid centre backs. Literally, one of the best Wonder Kid centre backs. Only on sixty-six thousand pounds a week. Already going to be a star, a star Dutch league player. He is close to his full potential. But when that means sixteen acceleration, sixteen agility, fifteen pace, fifteen tackling, good position, good leadership. I don't really want much more. He's already going to be easily into this first team and he's going to dominate. Again, a player valued at 76 to 83 million pounds. If you add up all of the value, if you've been paying attention to this right here, we are probably signed getting on for two, 300 million pounds completely of free players. Now, the only thing with this player... He, apart from Chelsea, obviously, but he's only really played for Palace, who, no disrespect, aren't a very strong team in the Premier League. So it's quite a big step up. But considering he's on the free, I am more than happy to take the gamble with stats like these. <laughs> Lastly, again, a player valued at £50 million pounds, it is going to be Starman Lazar, a player who costs quite a fair bob if you're trying to get him yourself. £60,000 a week. Again, not a, high, not a high earner, really. A few of these players are actually a lot less money than what I thought they would be. This player, I'm going to be honest... We probably didn't need him. I'm going to be honest with you guys, but when you've got a player like this that is on the market for completely free and maybe he's going to bail you out from now and then in a game where maybe you picked up an injury, I couldn't see a world where I didn't sign this guy considering that he was literally free. He's 24 years of age, already going to be a leading Dutch league player. In terms of where he has played again, we are going to see a mixture. So 
He had a little stint at Herfer. He then went to RB Leipzig. Udinese, again, it's a very similar sort of vibe to Gahai in terms of the team he's played for. He's not played for a lot of top, top teams, but that is down to us to obviously mould him into a top team. And considering it didn't cost us a penny... We're going to take that risk, and that our team now looks something like this. So, yeah, our team looks a little bit like this now. So, filtered by the best 11, by the game's opinion, that's going to be Marmo Dashvili, Wrench, Satalo, Gahai, Marmo, Mansvert, Drewsbury Hall, Neves, Bergvine, Almada, and Canate. But just looking down this bench, I mean, honestly, we've got Ruli, Vindal, Claudinho, Broby, Hato, Samar, I'm um, Samar, sorry, Akpom, Medic, Taylor, Lorenzo, Luca. We've got Avila, we've got Samardic. We've got so many good players, even on the reserves we've got countless players now you could argue maybe too many players but i'm trying to really make this squad mega because i don't know if you boys have actually even seen this i don't know if we can see it on here but we can't the registration laws for this division are basically next to none ridiculously easy so we can have a lot of players in this team and it's going to absolutely cook i will show you the outgoing players sorry i did forget um that is going to be here so we are going to see some players leave as well that is going to be likes of nick of we've got patera we've got jetson and also we've got hansay also going out and that is going to be the fourth transfer window in terms of this in terms of the transfers coming in and going out you can see here every single one was on the free which in my opinion i'm going to make this claim that is the best free transfer window I have ever seen on YouTube, in my opinion. Let me know in the comment who your best free transfer signing is, because I'm very intrigued. But let's go into this fourth transfer, fourth transfer window, fourth season, and hopefully lift the Champions League. If not, I'm going to look stupid signing a bunch of free players. But I think this just shows you don't always need to go and, you know, find the top wonder kids on YouTube to go and sign. Sometimes a good old fashioned free agent can get the job done. And that's exactly what we've done here in a 3 1 win in the Champions League final. Despite getting off to a ridiculous start inside of 33 minutes, we bounced back and scored three goals in the second half. It's going to be Almada on the left hand side, who's going to win it back from Diego Jota. Poor from him, who's going to drive into the box and get a goal by himself no Canate gets a little flick on there and does complete the comeback or the, the equalizer should I say Taylor down the left hand side in tons of space into Almada who's going to go alone Becker should be doing better Allison, what are you doing son and one more goal here to secure the Champions League trophy Samar back into wrench on the right hand side ball onto the edge into Vindal it's elegance and what a way to win the Champions League against a very good looking Liverpool team who clearly have brought in some new players in the likes of Diamande, Billy Gilmore, interesting signing. Um, not the best reserve bench, I will say, but the Champions League has been completed. And of course, that does mean we have completed the rebuild. We also did manage to win the Dutch Cup. We're cursed in the league, though, as we lose the league again by one point. Very, very frustrating. The best at conceding goals, only conceding 27. And for the first time ever, not the best at scoring goals. I imagine Feyenoord just about edged that in this season. Going over to the squad, though, we are going to see three players with 22 goals, all joint. Kenneth Taylor, Bergvine, and Kareem Canate. 13 goals coming from Thiago Almada as Kieran Drewsbury Hall also picks up 10 goals for the season. Um, Ruben Neves having quite a good season with nine goals. Vindal with nine as well one of them being in the biggest game possible the champions league final seven for samar as well broby with seven fell off a little bit there to be honest with you assist wise 16 for drewsbury hall 15 for bergvine who is by far one of my favorite players from this rebuild 13 for taylor Calate with 13 12 for almada wrench with 10 8 for neves 8 for vindal 5 for samardic and going over these highest average ratings we are seeing Bergvine top in the league. I mean, we're not going to include Jay Gorta because he'll probably played one game. But Bergvine ranking the top of the top. And I'm going to say it right now. Them free agents really did make the difference. And if we feast our eyes back to some of the players, this is annoying to see. I didn't even realize this. But now I'm going to lose a player on the free in Steven Bergvine. But um, if you look at the players that obviously we brought in, some of these players are world-class players. I mean, they are really, really good players in this game. So that clearly made the big difference. And... What a way to what a way to end it. I mean, finance wise, if we were going to carry on the rebuild, which obviously you guys can by downloading the save file, you've got 27 million pounds to spend. The staffing area is pretty much complete now. Maybe another physio, a few more scouts, but that's been all, all under control, all taken control of. Tactic wise, I will break down obviously the tactic which we did win. The Champions League win, the Champions League with, sorry. 
That is going to be the Ajax V3. A bit of a tweaked version to the V2, as you're going to see very shortly. Starting off with the goalkeeper on the sweeper keeper. Of course, if you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like. I do forget to mention and subscribe because we are trying to push for 20k. The wing back on the right is going to be on support, simply on the default. A ball playing defender on the right on shoot less often. And on the left hand side, shoot less often and also tackle harder. Usually the one which you want to push out a little bit more. I have tackle harder on. The wing back on the left is going to be on attack on sit narrower and also tackle harder. A ball and a midfield player on defend on mark tighter to really secure that back line. A box to box on the left on support on moving to channels and tackle harder. Mezala, nice and simple. Mr. Ruben Neves on close down more and tackle harder. Mr. Steven Bergvijn on tackle harder, who's an inside forward on attack. On the left hand side, an inside forward on support on shoot more often and sit narrower. And lastly, the advanced sword simply on attack. Over to the team instructions, the mentality is going to be set to attacking. In possession, is going to be set to fairly wide. We're going to pass the ball into the space. We're going to play out from the back for shorter passing directness, a slightly higher tempo. We're going to run at the defense, a very counter-attacking style while we work the ball into the box. So it's not just run, 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 have shots at goal uselessly. There is going to be a bit of end product with mixed crosses. In transition, we're going to see counter press, Counter, distribute to the fullbacks with no distribution type and no, no custom instruction for the goalkeeper in possession. Nice and simple. And lastly, out of possession, that higher defensive line, the high press and line of engagement, much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution and, of course, get stuck in. And that's going to complete your Ajax V3 tactics. So you are now going to have three tactics to obviously break down. The first one I'm not going to include in the video because we only used it for a season. Then the V2 we used for quite a fair bit. And obviously the V3 is the Champions League win and one. So definitely worth getting the V2 and the V3 to see what your team prefers. But overall, guys, a very, very good season in my eyes. Not too much I would change. Obviously, actually, yeah, there is maybe the league titles. But I've set myself a challenge to win the Champions League with Ajax, which, you know, isn't an easy task. We've got it done within four seasons. Try and beat me. See if you can get it done in two seasons, three seasons, and let me know in the comments if you can beat me. And also, suggest some more challenges. Maybe winning the Prem of Leicester again could be a good one. Leave a comment, let me know. And if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, drop a subscription, and I'll see you in the next video.